the Shadows of Evil characters were only ever seen in one Zombies map at the beginning of Black Ops 3, and that was it. We never saw or heard from them again. Their story was short, but what happened to them? Are they still alive in our Call of Duty Zombies storyline? Are they dead? And if they are, how did they die? This story revolves around four characters who are Jack Vincent, Floyd Campbell, Nero Blackstone, and Jessica Rose. All four of these characters lived and worked around Morgue City in the 1940s. Jack Vincent was a police officer. He had dealings with loads of different criminals, including the Mob of the Dead mobsters, Sal, Finn, the Weasel and Billy. Floyd Campbell was an up and coming boxer. Nero Blackstone was a successful magician within Morgue City. However, for reasons we still don't know, his popularity quickly sank to the point where he was being crowned worst magician of the year by Magician's Weekly magazine. And Jessica Rose was a burlesque dancer. She worked in the Black Lace Club, although she had dreams of becoming a famous Hollywood star instead. On October the 21st, 1943, the Shadow Man poses as a character he calls Mr. Rapt. And wanting someone to do tasks for him and find out information, he hires a reporter. Mr. Rapt, otherwise known as the Shadow Man, sends the reporter to multiple places such as the South Pacific and Russia to retrieve artifacts and stones for him. And one of the artifacts that Mr. Rapt told the reporter to retrieve was the summoning key. A couple of months later, after retrieving this in December, Mr. Rapt then sends the reporter to Morgue City, where he tells him to speak to the locals, take in the sights, sounds and smells of the city, and get to know what's going on. Hey Mr. Rapt, just checking in. So I'm here, finally. Taking in the sights, sounds and smells of Morgue City. I know you sent me here to write a piece about the city's bustling nightlife and theater scene, and the characters that inhabit it, but things are getting kind of strange. Even though no one seems to want to talk about it, something is definitely off about this city. Just last week, there was a media shower. A freaking media shower. And everybody acted like it was no big thing. Then, the mold showed up. All over the city. In the dark, damp alleys, there's a strange kind of fungus growing. It looks weird and smells even weirder, but nobody really says anything. Then people started getting sick. At first, it just made them delirious, confused. Then they really got sick. It was like they were wasting away. People finally started talking about it. I spoke to one guy in his 80s, a fruit seller, at the local market. He said something similar happened in New England in 1882. When I tried to press him on it, he just lowered his head and ignored me. If you ask me, something definitely ain't right here. However, not long after the reporter arrives, a meteor shower rains down over Morgue City. And soon after, a strange mold begins to grow all over the place. The locals become sick, some of them die, some of them start acting delirious and begin to tell the reporter strange stories. Hey Mr. Rapt, so I went by the market again today. For some reason the fruit seller was much more talkative. Even if what he said was more than a little crazy. He told me that when he was a boy, his uncle would get drunk and start talking about how a dark force cast its shadow over the city. How good and evil were battling right on our doorstep, and that the only thing holding back the forces of the apocalypse was the ancient order of the Keepers. Well, even if what he said was more than a little crazy, I'm not sure he was. Even though they're scared, or maybe because they are, people are talking more. Asking around, I've heard more than a few whispers about this ancient order and the Keepers. I think it's some kind of cult. They say you can hear them chanting sometimes. From beneath the city. There's all these rumors about human sacrifices and freaky shit that even the police won't investigate. Because they've been paid off? Or because they're too damn scared? I'm not sure what to believe anymore. After spending a couple of months in Morgue City talking to the locals, the reporter, as per Mr. Rapp's request, eventually tracks down four people within the city who were Nero, Jessica, Floyd and Jack, providing all of the details and contact information that he'd found out about them. Hey Mr. Rapp, so I tracked down all the people you asked me to look into. I sent you a telegram with all their details, all their contact numbers. But I gotta be honest, I'm getting nervous. These last six months, you've had me working like a low-rent private dick. When really, I just want to be a reporter. It's not that I'm ungrateful. I know the checks you've given me have been more than generous for services rented. It's just all this stuff you've had me do. Tracking down ancient artifacts in the South Pacific. Finding all these strange metals and rocks in Russia. And still, I haven't even met you face to face. I'm sorry, Mr. Rapt. 
I think maybe the mood in the city is getting to me a little. It's making me nervous. Antsy. Uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to you finally getting here. Now having obtained all of the details and information the Shadow Man needed on Nero, Jessica, Floyd and Jack, it would begin to manipulate them. Knowing that Nero was already having troubles with his wife, the Shadow Man pretended to be a company executive and told Nero's lawyer that Nero's wife has taken out substantial loans in his name and that Nero has just 15 days to settle before the company seeks reparation. As you can see, these documents give some indication as to the considerable amounts of money we are talking about. My client would never have signed the authorization on these loans. Nonetheless, there it is, in black and white. Signed by the missus herself. Nero's family estate is not what it once was. Even if these documents are genuine, we'll need some time to get our affairs in order. I would advise your client that our company intends to aggressively pursue settlement within one week. Fifteen days at the most. Look, I need to make a call. My secretary will see you out. Just a few days before this, after having a photo shoot, Jessica learns that a photographer might be in possession of some revealing pictures of her. And so, the Shadow Man, knowing he can use this to his advantage to manipulate Jessica, poses as a film director, acting as if he's interested in hiring her for a lead role. And the Shadow Man tells her producer that the part is hers. As you know, I'm looking to cast the female lead in my new picture. And I heard that you have quite the roster of up-and-coming talent in this town. Can you maybe tell me a little more about what kind of woman you're looking for? I'm looking for an all-American girl, a real beauty. I heard you may know an aspiring actress by the name of Jessica Rose. The burlesque dancer? <laughs> uh, she ain't exactly peaches and cream. More sugar and spice. I heard she's a real firecracker, if you know what I mean. I'd like to meet her. Give her a screen test. Leave it with me. I'll get back to you. Jessica's producer tells her the good news that she's got the part in a leading role. However, afraid that the photographer having her compromising pictures could jeopardize her chance at stardom, she asks to meet him so that they can sort stuff out. Next, the Shadow Man poses as a journalist where he suggests to Floyd Campbell's promoter that because he's a last minute substitution, that Floyd Campbell is a journeyman fighter. Putting aside your enormous self-interests as a promoter, what would you like to say to boxing fans everywhere about the upcoming fight? Uh, particularly with regard to this last-minute substitution, uh, Floyd Campbell? I'd like to say that Floyd Campbell is a credible opponent, despite how the bookies may see it. What about the fact that fans would much rather see the number one contender facing off with the champion, your champion, as opposed to this little herd of journeyman fighter? Look, there's no doubt that Floyd Campbell is the underdog. Nevertheless, are you using Campbell to keep your big money maker away from opponents who could be just a little too dangerous? The champ doesn't avoid anyone. But nothing. This interview is over. No further questions. Floyd, after hearing what the journalist had said, decides that for his fight against Tony King, he is going to wear brass knuckles to guarantee his shot at the title. And the final person the Shadow Man manipulates is Jack Vincent. Jack wasn't exactly a good cop. He was known for being crooked and easily brought. And because of his nature, this would eventually lead to the city's mayor leading an investigation across the entire Morgue City Police Department. Jack Vincent, knowing his part in police corruption, then proceeded to silence all of his criminal associates to clean his name. And so the Shadow Man, masquerading as an internal affairs officer, attempts to convince Jack Vincent's partner to admit that Jack plots to kill the snitch who could provide evidence against him. Please understand that you yourself are not under any suspicion at this time. This is merely an informal interview. Yeah, yeah, I know. Can we just cut to the chase? The chase? Excellent metaphor. Or is it an allegory? I can never remember the difference. You want to know about my partner, Jack Vincent? You're a good detective. So what do you want to know? That he's a loudmouth, show-off, more than a little rough around the edges? That he's a drinker, a smoker? How about the fact that he's got a wife that scares him more than any fucking criminal out there? What do you want me to tell you? Is Jack Vincent on the take? Listen, the more I talk to you, the more I'll get a reputation around the precinct. Can we maybe do this elsewhere? Now having manipulated all four of these characters, the Shadow Man's plan was in motion. On April the 21st, 1944, Nero misses a call from his lawyer informing him that the documents from his wife were forged. So there's nothing to worry about. 
Zero, I have the most wonderful news. The loan documents were fraudulent. Well, your wife was fraudulent. She forged your signature on the loan agreements, and we can prove it. The date on the forms says November 5th last year. Exactly the same time that you were in the hospital following your performance of the amphibious man. You couldn't possibly assign those papers. You were in a coma for the entire month. On the same day, Jack misses a call from his partner telling him that he has his back with internal affairs and that he has nothing to worry about. Hey Jackie, it's me. Some suit from internal affairs came by today, asking a whole bunch of questions. I didn't say shit, because I don't know shit. As far as I can tell, you're in the clear. I trust you, Jackie. You're my best friend. You're like a brother. I just wanted you to know that I got you back. Always. At the same time, Floyd misses a call from his promoter that the fight was a success and that he has a shot at the title. Hey Floyd, you did good. You kept your word, delivered the knockout. I just wanted to tell you that not to worry about any fucking journalists or commission investigations. That shit is done. Anyways, besides setting your mind at rest, I wanted to give you the good news. It's all set. You got it, Floyd. You got your title shot. January 15th. And Jessica misses a call from her producer where he basically tells her that he didn't have a good feeling about the director and it didn't work out. However, she still scored a leading role in a musical that he and his partner are going to finance. Hey, hey, Jessica. A movie director came by to talk to me today, said he wanted to meet you. I gotta be honest, I didn't get a good feeling from him. I told him where to go. <laughs> well, not in so many words. Listen, I'm glad you didn't sign that studio contract. Truth is, I'm not even much of a producer. I'm more of a talent wrangler. Here's the thing. My partner's written a musical that just got financing. I know that you're gonna be perfect for the lead. This time next year, you're gonna be on Broadway, baby! All four of the characters, Jessica, Jack, Floyd, and Nero, after missing these important calls, set to make things go their way. Jessica, not knowing she doesn't have anything to worry about, eventually meets with the photographer and stabs him to death, securing the incriminating photos. Jack, not knowing that his partner has his back because he missed his call, he kills the snitch, who he thinks could turn him over to internal affairs. Floyd, not thinking he has a real shot at the title because he missed his call from his promoter, ends up still using his brass knuckles in his fight against Tony King and kills him. And Nero, having missed his call from his lawyers, informing him that the documents were forged, still thinking that his wife is doing him over, he kills her, making it look like a work accident, and cashes in on her life insurance policy to square away the non-existent debts. All four of the characters on the same day, April the 21st, 1944, had committed murder after being manipulated by the Shadow Man. A couple of days later, acting like life is back to normal again, Jessica goes to work to do her usual performance at the Black Lace Club, where, coincidentally or not, Nero, Floyd and Jack also head there to watch her perform. However, shortly after, all four characters are strangely knocked unconscious and they wake up in a twisted version of Morgue City, one shifted slightly from reality. They look at their hands and see branded on them is the Mark of the Beast and as they stand up and explore the city, they discover zombies roaming around, at which point they hear a mysterious figure called the Shadow Man talk to them. He tells them if they listen to him and complete rituals, they will be able to atone for their sins and escape this twisted reality they are in. And so believing him, that's exactly what they do. Jessica sacrifices her producer, Jack sacrifices his partner, Floyd sacrifices his promoter and Nero sacrifices his lawyer. But after completing these rituals, the Shadow Man reveals to them that they've opened up a gateway to Dimension 63, allowing the Apothecans to enter. The crew realise that they've been tricked. As this is going on, Nero begins to remember and realises that all of these events that he's witnessed were depicted in a book that he read. This book told him about the Apothecans and the Keepers and the Shadow Man. And after realising this, he then knew what he needed to do. Along with his associates, he then proceeded to complete a bunch of different quests around Morgue City. And as they were exploring, they discovered a message from a rift from someone they'd never heard from. We know this person is Dr. Maxis, they didn't, but Maxis, knowing the fate of this dimension, left this message for anyone who was still alive in this twisted version of Morgue City, and he basically told them that they are doomed. To any survivors of this realm, I am truly sorry. I wish I could offer you some words of comfort, but I cannot. 
It is my hope that I can rid the universe of the evil that has plagued us for so long. But in my heart, I know many more dimensions will be lost forever as we continue our journey towards peace. Forgive me. But after learning this, it didn't stop them. The Shadows of Evil crew continued on with their quest to stop the Shadow Man. They summoned the Keepers where, eventually after working together, they killed the Shadow Man. Or at least, that's what they thought. They thought he was dead, but unknowingly to them, only his physical body was destroyed, whilst his soul was preserved inside of the summoning key. After thinking they had killed the Shadow Man, using the power of the Keepers, the four destroyed the large Apothecan creature roaming in the skies of Morgue City. Assuming that everything was over and would go back to normal, the Keepers then return the summoning key back to Nero and the crew, but Richtofen quickly opens up a rift, enters their dimension, and takes it. He thanks Nero and the others for all of their efforts, and then teleports away. And the very next day, just as Maxis told them, the Apothecans destroyed their dimension, killing everyone who lived in it, including our characters. So, that was their fate. The Shadows of Evil crew died. They were killed by the Apothecans after their dimension was destroyed. I've also done videos on the five characters, the Call of the Dead cast and Victus. If you want to check those other videos out, you'll find them on the channel. Let me know in the comment section below which set of characters you want to know about next. Thank you all for watching. Drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.